Hi all. Let us see what is a Hessian matrix and applications of Hessian matrix in this lecture. Okay. So let's start with a function f of x comma y. Okay. And Hessian matrix for this function is defined like this. So which is a matrix with second order partial derivatives. And that is, we denote Hessian matrix with H. So for this, it is dou square f by dou x square. And this is dou square f by dou x dou y. And similarly, the other, this is dou y dou x. And we know these two guys will be equal. And this is dou square f by dou y square. Okay. So this is the Hessian matrix for a two variable function. Whereas if you take uh, a three variable function, let's say w equal to a function of x, y, z. Let's see how a Hessian matrix for this looks like. So Hessian matrix for this will be given by a three by three matrix. That is derivative of f with respect to x twice. Similarly, dou square f by now dou x dou y and this is dou square f by uh, dou x dou z okay this is how we we follow it's like one one element so with respect to x we do it twice and this is one two element so one two so dou x dou y you can see and similarly this is one three that is x z like that okay so similarly you can think of the other guys that is dou square f by uh, dou y dou x and this is dou square f by dou y square and this is dou square f by dou y dou z similarly the last one you can see okay so it doesn't matter whether you write dou x dou z or uh, dou z dou x order of differentiation doesn't matter here so no issue all right okay. so this is the hessian matrix for three variables similarly i hope you can think of a hessian matrix for an n variable function also all right so let us go with an example let's say you are given this function f of x y which is equal to 4x square minus 3x square y plus 5 uh, let me take 5y uh, square okay so this is the function you are given with now you are asked to write its hessian matrix how do you write so to write hessian matrix we need to compute the second order partial derivatives of this function all right so let me see what is fx first fx is uh, 8x minus this is 6xy okay and fy which is minus 3x square plus 10y okay now let's go for second order partial derivatives that is fxx which is 8 minus 6y and fxy which is minus 6x and fyy which is 10 all right <clears throat> now if once if you compute fxy no need of computing fyx you can see that that you will get minus 6x only all right so now the hessian matrix for two variables will be given by fxx, fxy and fxy or you can write fyx also and that is fyy. So here the Hessian matrix is nothing but 8 minus 6y and this is minus 6x minus 6x and this is 10. Okay. So one observation here is Hessian matrix is always symmetric. Why? Because we know when you differentiate f with respect to x and y or y and x, it will give you the same result. 
provided f has some properties but anyway we will always take a polynomial function a continuous function uh, or a function which has continuous partial derivatives so so for that function we can observe that order of differentiation is doesn't matter all right so this is how you can find hessian matrix and let's let me define what is hessian that is nothing but the determinant of the hessian matrix like we we define what is a jacobian matrix and the determinant of a jacobian matrix okay so, so similarly here so we are going to call the determinant of a hessian matrix is simply hessian so that is what determinant of hessian matrix okay so i hope you must have re remembered a second derivative test to find or to classify a critical point do you remember like given a function uh, no problem if you don't remember no issue so let us have a function f of x comma y um, uh, let's let me take a simple function x minus 2 whole square plus uh, y minus 3 whole cube okay so this is the function i have now uh, i would like to know what are the critical points of this function or in other words i would like to know where this function takes local maximums or local minimums so how do you identify that first of all you find the critical point so now the critical points can be found by equating the partial derivatives to zero first order partial derivatives that is fx equal to zero and fy equal to zero or the critical point is nothing but a point at which both the partial derivatives are zero or both the partial derivatives doesn't exist or one may exist and one must become zero like that. That is the definition of critical point. Now let me see what is fx here. Now fx is nothing but 2 into x minus 2 and equated to zero. I hope this you can see x equal to 2. And similarly, if y equal to zero, this implies uh, Okay, let me find Fy first. Fy is uh, Fy here is three into y minus three whole square. And if you equate it to zero, you can find y equal to three is the only point. And similarly, here we get x equal to two. Okay, so once if you find the critical point, so that is two comma three is a critical point all right so now let us see whether it is local maxima or local minima it means if we say a point is a critical point whether the function has maximum or minimum or it may be a saddle point saddle point it means it is a critical point at which it's neither have maxima nor minima now 2 comma 3 I'm taking okay so first let me compute what is a hessian matrix for the given one so what is a hessian matrix for the given function so which is uh, uh, which is actually 2 here and this is see I'm, I'm taking fxx it's not that I'm substituting the critical point so okay let me write fxx fxy and fyy sorry fyx and this is fyy and this equal to so fxx i hope you can see that is 2 only whereas fyy sorry fxy that is 0 because it is independent of y and this is also 0 and fyy now it's it's second fyy i hope you can see that is 6 into y minus 2 so that we need to write it here so that is 6 into y minus 2 Okay, so this is the Hessian matrix for that function. Now, let me see what is the Hessian matrix at the critical point that is 2 comma 3. So at 2 comma 3, which is 2, 0, 0, here only I need to substitute. So in place of y, we will substitute 3. If you do so, we will get 6 only. Now, you see what is the determinant of the Hessian matrix? So determinant of Hessian matrix that is Hessian is nothing but 12. Okay, it is positive. All right. 
so if it is positive and and fxx at the critical point that is 2 comma 3 is positive we can believe that the function has local minimum at that point okay i hope we can recall the second derivative test that you used it in the first semester you take uh, uh, delta you may call that uh, uh, this matrix as delta hessian matrix if delta is positive fxx is positive then it will have local maximum and similarly if, if this determinant of h is positive and fxx is negative then it has local min sorry a layer for positive local minimum fxx is positive when fyy is negative then it will have local maximum all right it means that therefore we can conclude that f has local minimum minimum at 2 comma 3 and it can be concluded from the eigen values of the hessian matrix also so here uh, hessian matrix is so simple because it is uh, it is a diagonal matrix all right what are the eigen values of hessian matrix here those are nothing but eigen values are 2 comma 6 all right if you observe that eigen values both the eigen values are positive so whenever this eigen values are positive for this matrix we can conclude that it is positive definite okay so i, I hope you remember what is positive definite we discussed in the class that is x transpose ax is greater than or equal to 0 greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 for all x belongs to rn then we say the matrix is positive definite so if this hessian matrix is positive definite it means all eigen values are positive that implies you can conclude that it has local minimum whereas if it is negative definite let's say if you found that uh, this hessian matrix is negative definite it means x transpose ax is negative for every x belongs to r then we say that it is negative definite now whenever a is a symmetric matrix it it can be proved that if this satisfies this condition then all eigen values are negative okay so if all eigen values of the hessian matrix are negative then i mean if you find that the determinant of hessian matrix is positive and all eigen values are negative okay it is possible because for example if the eigen values are minus 1 and minus 2 what is their product the product is nothing but 2 it is positive so product can be uh, positive it means the determinant can be positive and all eigen values can be negative all right so this kind of matrix we call a negative definite matrix so whenever a uh, hessian matrix is negative definite then it is going to have local maximum or in other words we can say like this hessian so hessian is greater than 0 it means determinant of the hessian matrix and fxx is negative then it is going to have local max local maximum all right suppose if you find that the determinant of this hessian matrix so the determinant of the hessian matrix is negative it means in this case when you look at the matrix uh, eigen values of the matrix you can have a uh, some positive some negative so in that case we call it is indefinite indefinite matrix positive definite negative definite indefinite okay so if the hessian matrix is negative then we say that f has saddle point whatever second derivative test is there that is what we are discussing in terms of hessian matrix that's it it's like the same matrix you used it there earlier but we are precisely calling it as a hessian matrix that is only the thing all right but if the hessian matrix is uh, zero I, i mean the determinant of the hessian matrix is zero if the hessian is zero then this test is not useful i mean we cannot conclude anything 
using this second derivative test. All right. So you can see the application of this Hessian matrix while determining or while classifying the critical points as either local maximas or local minimas or saddle points. So I hope you understand how to write a Hessian matrix and how to find Hessian that means uh, determinant of a Hessian matrix and using Hessian matrix how to classify the critical points. Okay, so let me repeat the classifications of the critical points. So first you write the Hessian matrix and you see the determinant and you see the determinant at a critical point. Okay, so let's say let uh, A comma B be a critical point. of f now you see what is hessian matrix at a comma b all right now you see the determinant of the hessian matrix suppose if you find this to be positive and fxx at ab is positive then it has i mean the function has local minimum at a b that's all. okay so similarly uh, knowing that the determinant of the hessian matrix is positive okay and fxx at a b if it is negative then f has local maximum Suppose if, if the Hessian matrix determinant is negative, then F has saddle point. At A, B, F of A, B. Okay. It means saddle, it means neither maximum nor minimum. Or you can you can discuss in terms of uh, uh, eigenvalues also. This entire statement you can you can replace. You can replace it like this. If all eigenvalues are positive, if all eigenvalues of H are positive, positive it means it should not be zero also i'm not saying that non negative if i say non negative it, zero is also allowed positive it means we are not allowing zero also okay and we are writing you see greater than zero strictly greater than zero it's not that we are writing equal to zero all right so if all eigenvalues are positive then uh, f has local minima or the other way the other way around so for local local maximum we want all eigenvalues let me simply write ev for eigenvalues all eigenvalues of h or negative then you can conclude this okay suppose and for this one can be replaced like this like some eigenvalues are positive and some are negative it means you'll find the combination of both positive and also negative eigenvalues so in that case we say it is a saddle point all right so the same second derivative test we are discussing in terms of eigenvalues of a Hessian matrix that's it so i hope you understand okay so let me stop it thank you